Hello, thank you so much for tuning into my YouTube channel. In today's video, I want to talk about colorimetry in a very simple language. Colorimetry is a science through which we could quantify the colors. I, I will also talk about scientific works that were done uh, back in the time which led to the colorimetry as we know it today. Let's get started. Okay, let's talk about colorimetry in a simple language. Colorimetry is the science which tries to quantify the color per perceived by human observer. Color is the result of three factors interacting with each other. Those factors are light sources, which is represented by this sun here, objects, and human visual system. So the colorimetry science, in order to quantify the color, has made an attempt to quantify all these three factors. This system was first established in 1931 by the CIE, which stands for the International Commission on Illumination. Let's first start with light sources or illuminance. Light sources pr provide the electromagnetic energy required to excite visual response. The specification of the color properties of light sources is performed in two ways, through measurement and standardization. The difference between these two ways is better clarified with the definition of the light source versus illuminant. Light sources are the actual emitters of visible light, like incandescent light bulbs or sky or the fluorescent tubes. Illuminants are, on the other hand, standardized tables of values that represent a spectral power d distribution typical of some uh, particular light source, such as CIE illuminant A, which is representative of tungsten light source, and D65, which is representative of the average, daylight, average daylight, and F11, which is fluorescent TL84. Spectral power distribution is simply a plot or a table of a radiometric quantity as a function of wavelength, normalized to 1 at the wavelength of 560 nanometer. Spectral radiometers are used to measure the spectral power distribution of the light sources, which has been shown here. Just an example. And here are the spectral power distribution of D65, A, and F11 illuminants. So as you can see, this is an energy versus the amount of energy that's being emitted by the light source versus wavelength. Once light source or illuminant is specified, the next step is the characterization of the material interaction with visible radiant energy. The interaction of the radiant energy with materials obeys the law of conservation of energy. The radiant energy when hitting, the, when hitting an object can either be absorbed or reflected or transmitted. These quantities are usually measured in relative terms as percentages of the incident flux rather than an absolute radiometric quantity. Therefore, the reflectance can be defined as the ratio of the reflected energy to the incident energy. And the same is true of transmittance and absorbance. The interaction of radiant energy with objects is not a simple spectral phenomenon, and the reflectance and transmittance of the objects is not only a function of wavelengths, but also a function of illumination and viewing geometry. The phenomenon of gloss can be a good example, which changes significantly when you change the viewing angle or illumination angle or anything else. It changes just very dramatically. Therefore, CIE has established a small number of standard illumination and viewing geometries for colorimetry. The CIE has defined four standard illumination and viewing geometries for spectrophotometry reflectance measurement as follows. Shown here. The first one, which is here, would be diffuse normal. Diffuse normal. 
and normal diffuse on the right side. The second was 45 normal and normal 45. So the first one is light source and the second one is the viewing. So it using uh, using either one of these four measurements we could measure the spectral reflectance. Therefore using this method the reflectance of the material is going to be measured. It should be noted that in the case of uh, diffuse and normal and uh, and uh, normal and diffuse the reflectance is defined as the ratio of the reflected energy to the incident energy. But in the case of the 45 uh, zero 45 normal and normal 45 and normal is also zero which means it's uh, perpendicular to the to the surface so in these two case the reflectance factor is computed with respect to the perfect reflecting diffuser which has a theoretical reflectance of 100% in all direction the reason is in the case of 45 zero and 0 45 the ratio of the reflected energy to the incident energy is very small. Measurement and the standardization of light sources and materials provide the necessary physical information for colorimetry. What remains to be defined is a quantitative technique to predict the response of the human visual system. The color of the object can be specified using the following equation where L, M, and S represent the overall color that we see or the response of the human visual system. In this equation, it is assumed that the L, M, and S sensitivity, spectral sensitivities of the retinal cones are known. And all we have to do is to just multiply these sensitivities by the spectral power distribution of the stimulus that the observer is looking at wavelength by wavelength and then sum them all up. So this spectral power distribution of the stimulus means the reflectance of the stimulus and uh, the light source, the multiplication of the two at each wavelength. But in 1931, when colorimetry was first standardized, there was no access to human visual systems uh, cones sensitivities. Therefore, the CIE, in establishing the 1931 system of colorimetry, needed to take a less direct method. Therefore, a system of colorimetry was built based on the principles of trichromacy and Grassmann's law of additive color mixture. The concept of this system is that color matches can be specified in terms of the amounts of three additive primaries required to visually match a stimulus. Grassmann's law of additive color mixtures. So any color source C here can be matched by a linear combination of three other colors, primaries R, G, B, provided on condition that none of those three can be matched by a combination of the other two. This is fundamental to colorimetry and is Grassmann's first law of color mixture. So a color C can be matched by R sub C amount of red, G sub C amount of green, and B sub C units of or amounts of blue primaries. The units can be measured in any form that quantifies the light source, the light power. So this is the additivity law. Any light could be matched by uh, by specific by a particular by particular amounts of the other three lights. Since any color can be matched by certain amounts of these three primaries, those amounts, in other words, those tri-stimulus values along with the definition of the primary set, allow the specification of a color. If two stimuli can be matched using the same amounts of primaries, they have the same tri-stimulus values. Then they will also match each other 
uh, when viewed in the same conditions. So the conditions are very important. So if the same amount of primaries are used to match two stimuli, those stimuli would ha will have the same tristimulus values. Tristimulus values is the amount of each primary used to uh, define the color of that stimuli, stimulus. Using this concept and setting up a color matching experiment in which a set of uh, spectrum colors were matched using three blue, green, and red monochromatic primaries, the first set of color matching functions which are some sort of representative of the spectral sensitivities of human visual system were obtained. These color matching functions, tristimulus values of the spectrum colors, they're also called tristimulus values of the spectrum colors, these guys. So these color matching functions show the amount of the primaries need to match the specific spectrum color at a specific wavelength. Here, uh, here are the color matching functions that uh, were obtained this way. R, RGB primaries that were used. And using this color matching function, here is how the stimulus values for a particular stimulus is obtained using these guys. Where S and R are spectral, uh, this is the spectral power distribution of light source and R is the reflectance and RGB are these guys here, color matching functions. But as, as it can be seen, the red primary has some negative value which makes it unrealistic. Therefore, a linear transform was derived to transform this set of primaries to one that has no negative value. CIE called this transformed set of primaries spectral tristimulus values of the CIE 1931 standard observer or color matching functions of the CIE 1931 standard observer. They are shown here. Now, having this set of non-negative color matching functions, the CIE tristimulus, CIE XYZ tristimulus values of the stimulus can be co computed as shown here, where P is the spectral power distribution of the light source, X, Y, Z bar, show the color matching functions of the 1931 standard observer, and R, shows the reflectance spectra of the stimulus. K is also a normalizing factor so that light source would have the luminance factor of 100. So these equations are the start of the colorimetry the way we know it nowadays. Later on, CIE came up with another set of color matching functions as the set of 1931 was suitable for two degree visual field, but they needed another set of, another set of color matching function for a wider visual angle. So they came up with 1964 CIE standard observer for wide visual angle colorimetric applications. They are shown here. 10 degree visual field. This is the basic of colorimetry which enabled the color scientists to measure the color of an object and assign a number to it. However, later on they realized CIE XYZ stimulus values do not correlate well with human perception of color. Therefore, they came up with CLAB and CLAB color spaces. CLAB has gained much more attention than CLAB. Here are the equations to change CIE XYZ to CLAB values. X, Y sub N, X sub X sub n and Z sub n shows the tristimulus value of values of the light sources. We're not going to go through CLAB, but it's just it's just good to know that the visual uniformity of CLAB is much better than that of CIE XYZ. But there is still a long way to go to find the more to find the most perceptually uniform color space. There has been a lot of color spaces suggested so far which we're going to cover in the future. That said, this is the fundamentals of colorimetry stated in a very simple language. 
Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it and you were able to get something out of it. If you liked the video, I would appreciate if you could subscribe to the channel and also share it with your friends. Thank you so much again and have a nice day.